So thank you for coming. Oh, no, thank um, you. For to introduce me. everybody, this is Manuel Barrera. Barrera, right? Yep. From our grants and sponsored programs office. And like, I went to a workshop that he did on grant research um, about a month ago, three weeks ago. Oops. And I was blown away. Like, I thought I knew what I was doing when I was teaching you guys stuff, and I do. But Manuel knows like five times as much as me. So, um, at least. So I thought he, it would be cool if he came in and gave an extended like presentation about grants as well. And then I'll go over the stuff from last week and I'll go over the stuff from today. Or not last week, from yesterday and today. Um, and... Is it Elizabeth? Well, you're sitting in the wrong place. Why? You're supposed to be sitting there. <laughs> he said you moved it. Like, that throws everything off for me. So Mirella is also working on that same uh, project with, uh, with Daniel. I'm so sorry, Mirella. Like, if you guys move, it throws up my whole memorization system. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. No, not at all. Um, so everything that I'll be doing today is on our website. So you go to csub.edu slash grasp, as in to grasp at something, G-R-A-S-P, uh, and that'll take you to our website. So everything that I do, you'll be able to access later on. Feel free to always go back. Obviously, you're a student, so you have access. Um, just to give a quick primer on our office, we are the office that helps and supports faculty, staff, and leadership with grants, research, uh, and sponsored programs. Sponsored programs is a technical term. It means somebody that's funded you to do a project. Someone else's money. Um, and so what I'll do for you guys today is to give you a nice little overview of grant funding that's out there. Um, we'll get to play with an online platform that you guys can access on your own time as well. Uh, and the intent of it is just to give you a little bit of an overview of the landscape of funding that's out there, both governmental and non, um, i.e. philanthropic, local, so that you can better educate yourself as to what's going on out there. Um, and I'm sure Jeremy has very much talked about the fact that when it comes to small business, private industry, um, you should never ever believe that somehow the government does not fund private industry or private business. Not at all. Not to um, the quite a bit of funding goes into that, whether it's in economic development, small business, local level, state level, uh, and then typically federal grants that eventually go to the states and they can divvy them up however they believe. So what I'll do today is uh, we're on the website. So you would go to funding. I think that's pretty descriptive enough. And you have three grant search resources. You have Pivot, the Grant Resource Center, and Grants.gov. So I'm gonna start with Grants.gov and in turn, the federal grant making agencies. We're starting at the very top. So let's be very clear about that. So it may be difficult for you to see the connection, you know, if you work at a local small business or you have you know, something that you're trying to get in terms of startup funding for. But Can let's just start off second, at the well? very top. Uh, just to give you, you asked how much time and I didn't tell you, I just told you the introduction to the class. Um, is half an hour enough time? Oh, that's enough. Okay, so you got half an hour. And I also wanted to mention, I think a lot of students in here, after you talk about small business funding, like, they always want to know about scholarship money. Um, and I have a couple ideas on that, but I'm sure you could help them even more. Sure. So in addition to small business money, individual money that might help them in their graduate school right. studies, or even for those that aren't graduating yet, for money for, for CSUB. CSUB. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. Um, and so you, there you can see on our website, you have federal grant making agencies. You have about 20 some odd agencies. These are all gigantic bureaucratic departments. Um, for your own interests, um, you might have the Corporation for National and Community Service. You might have you, the U.S. Department of Commerce, um, maybe Department of Energy, if your business deals with energy-related initiatives, Department of Labor, um, and let's see. 
Yeah. And of course, probably the most important one, right, for your interest, small business administration. SBA works with different organizations to provide grants for small businesses. The biggest thing that I would say is that when you go to visit somebody's website is that you just want to be able to know what are they about and where do they fund. So really on your own time, this is where you would just go here. You will you know, look up what's about SBA, look at what funding initiatives they have currently and at, in terms of grant funding. Um, this is broad treetop stuff. So if you already are working for a business or you're working with a business that has multiple entities or you're collaborating in some uh, large scale way with other businesses and, and then maybe even getting involved with say chambers of commerce, local um, nonprofit groups around a specific task, this is where you would wanna go because the idea is that now you're looking for funding for big time initiatives looking at things such as economic development, small business, entrepreneurship, all things that Jeremy very much is focused on. So, i.e. federal government, that's where you would start there and become knowledgeable about that. Secondly, I would have you go to the Grant Resource Center. Think of this as kind of like a news agency. Um, it tracks activity that's going on at the federal level with regards to federal funding. So it's everything from the president is proposing this, Congress has allocated an X, um, this type of funding stream is coming up again and it's cyclical. The idea is that this is sort of a, um, what's the word, Washington Post, if you will, for grant funding. You can go there, get quick news, find out what's being available, what's coming up, what's in the pipeline and go from there. Um, as you guys can see, you know, you might have things that are very gigantic grants, stuff for rural workforce development, i.e. fellowships, and then student activities. So there's quite a bit of funding out there for student fellowships, um, if you're looking for graduate school, um, so on and so forth. I'm gonna show you a tool that's a little bit better um, in terms of just wheedling it down and being a little bit more focused when you're searching for items. So. To summarize, Grant Resource Center, use this as sort of your topical news information as to what's going on right now federally um, and in terms of funding and so on and so forth. And this is where I would want you to start. Start with Pivot. So Pivot is a software which we have a license for, which allows anybody with the CSUB email address account to be able to look for funding opportunities. It serves a couple of other um, functions, but we'll just focus on this one for now. What I would want every single student here to do is to be able to log in, and you can do access via my institutional login. You simply select your, inst your institution, which is there. At which point you'll enter your account. So it'll take you to Pivot, and here's where you'll begin. First and foremost, in terms of getting started, go to your profile. Here, you can select yourself, and you will not be in there because you're all students, you don't have a default profile. And then go into edit your profile. You'll hit continue, it'll open up a new window. All of these elements are things that are used by faculty in terms of building out a profile online. For your interest, I would want you to come down here, keywords, hit edit, and enter what areas you're interested in going into. So if you're looking for fellowships, enter that. If you're looking for scholarships, enter that. You're gonna get a quite a bit of recall from everything and anything that's out there. 
So this is where also you want to put some search terms that are particular to your discipline or your interest in terms of IE small business, startup funding, tech startups, so on and so forth. The purpose of this is so that you build a profile and in turn the website automatically does these searches for you. So rather than you having to go in here and having to do search after search, it just generates them once a week. You get an email from the system and in turn you would just browse through that list of any and all opportunities that are there. To sort of show you, in a sense, I would have you go back and do a funding profile. So in terms of what the database states, it says that it has a little less than $70 billion worth of funding. That's federal, state, and or private philanthropic available. And of course, you can play with the infographic here to find out in what area it's at. So if you can do a general search, you're more than welcome to in terms of just playing with it. Somebody want to give me a search search term? There's something in particular. So let's search on restaurants. Like I know, like, yeah, not Adam. Damn it! I, I got the restaurant thing, but I forget. David. That's it. Okay, David. Like I know, David is one example of many that are interested in either supporting a restaurant that already is in the family or starting a new restaurant. So any funding that could help a small restaurant to grow or like cook healthy food or anything, I think would be really good. Yeah. So I would recommend that you really do use the, um, what's it called, advanced search function, just because you can get better recall that way. Mm -hmm. So just by typing restaurants or small and business, you get quite a bit. So rather than sitting here and going through every single thing, um, I'd recommend that you get a little bit more specific with your search terms. But what I would recommend is that you just honestly just go through here and just play around, search with it. I'm looking at this right here, Growing Business Awards. So apparently Amazon, uh, they do this in the United Kingdom. And they have apparently an, an array of awards that you can apply for and get funding for. But we want to limit it. So in this case, we want to do training or scholarships. So now we have everything from internships, programs, experience grants, career grants, um, youth employment programs, entrepreneur programs, education grants, so on and so forth. So what I would want you to do is really just come in here and start playing and whittling it down. More importantly, my hope is that by searching in here, you'll find something that's of interest. I'm looking for something that might be interesting, I guess. Not sponsor types. I would want to go back to advanced search. Go to activity location. Research grants, fellowships, advocacy corps, minority student scholarship program. Let's do something like this. Refine search. Let's see what, let's see what happens if we get any of it.
Green Alley. The Un Entrepreneur Awards. That looks to be elsewhere, though. Can I point something out for the students? Go for it. Actually, while you're doing this, like, you see that number at the top? That's 13,929 grant, separate grant opportunities for small businesses in the United States. Like, what I was showing you on Grant Watch is in the hundreds, sometimes the thousands, but there's probably 10 times as much grant opportunities that are listed in this pivot portal that our grasp office has access to. And like, I mean, look at this. I, you could get more specific with the search, but if you just click on any of those, $25,000 for a nonprofit tech accelerator in, in the Bay Area. So if you had a not-for-profit and you wanted to like get some support and funding for growing your not-for-profit, $25,000 there if you're willing to go up to San Francisco to use it. Now, you're gonna have to actually pay to live in San Francisco, but like you can get $25,000 worth of funding and resources for your, uh, and that's the 13 weeks it says there? It's a 13 week program. Yeah. It meets in the Bay Area, they pay you, and you get free training. So if anybody, like everybody in here has talked about for-profit businesses, but I know every semester I have a certain number of students who are passionate about mm -hmm. starting a new, uh, new like youth activity organization in the community or starting a new uh, health uh, like initiative for, for the community. If you wanted to start a new health initiative for Kern County, you could apply and get $25,000 for six weeks worth of training in San Francisco. It's amazing. And like Manuel wasn't even searching for that. He was just doing a general like search on small business opportunities. And like, I think it's, it's amazing just how many, how much money's out there. Yeah. So anyway, just sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. Um, just to give an, an idea, because of the type of the funding that you're looking for, you're probably going to have to deal with either federal government or private philanthropic. So I'm going to limit it to private foundations. So public charter startup grants. Let's see what that is. Oh, if you want to start up a charter school. There you go. Cool. Like 300 grand, too. Yeah. Corporate great giving. Small town grants program, travel grants, good neighbor citizen company grants. That's interesting. Nationally, the sponsorship supports communities through social investments, safety grants fund, auto and railway, teen driver education, and they can fund affordable housing, job training, neighborhood revitalization, small business development. So they have a, quite a few priorities that they fund. How much is the how much is the grant size? It does not. It says grant amounts are not specified. Huh. But more importantly, we have the original link to the agency, and so we can maybe see grant amounts must be five thousand dollars or more. So they don't give you a ceiling; they give you a base. Cool. So if they're starting at five, we certainly could imagine that they're willing to entertain things between five and a hundred thousand probably correct so B based on the project and you could, you could get at least five figures of funding from state farm to like do like maybe maybe our entrepreneurship center could get like fifty thousand from state farm to do training for you guys in this class in the future and, and if you notice in terms of the eligible organizations this is why i switched it over to private philanthropy so they fund educational institutions, but they also fund cham chambers of commerce. So once again, the idea being that if you have a group of businesses, i.e. the Hispanic Chamber, Black Chamber, Greater Bakersfield Chamber, you can, you can apply underneath that umbrella and that funding can be spread around for a bigger initiative. Um, Manuel, so, well, could, you, could you talk for a second to the students? Like, I'm interested, feel free to contradict me on this one, but I've described to the students like, I can't count how many grants there are that say you have to be a 501c3 or a government institution or an educational institution. Mm -hmm. And what I've tried to tell them is, like, think, if you're a small business, think broader about a team 
that you could put together that yeah. includes yeah. a nonprofit or the university. Yeah. So, like, it can't just be about your business, but if you can apply for something that the university gets and then subcontracts to you, is that, am I on the right trail here? You are. You know, I think if, and I think, I mean, you're all business majors. You're here to learn how to do it right, to gain capacity, knowledge, skills, and abilities. Um, and so there's often this gap of how do I actually go out and get a small business and get it started? How do I get the capital and so on and so forth? There are quite a few community resources out there, community groups that you can go to, network, get to know them, get access to their funding and resources. And then furthermore, they're the ones that are applying for these types of projects. One of them is, in fact, the university under the Small Business Development Center. We have these initiatives, these research centers on campus that are very much tailored to that. So really, you should not look at operating your business in, in isolation, in a silo. You really should be looking out to partners in the community, um, networking in, in like groups to be able to come together on mutually um, beneficial initiatives. Um, you're all small bit. Just a quick question. How many of you belong to an, uh, an affiliate group or some affinity group in the community or here locally? How many of you go to mixers? How many of you go to the Chamber of Commerce? How many of you go to down to the uh, county meetings as necessary? Like those are all things that are all interconnected. Um, and once I think you start making those connections in terms of understanding the lay of the land, um, Hence, it opens up opportunities for these things. So the idea is not to, quote unquote, get you to literally apply to this directly, not at all. It's for you to be able to be knowledgeable and have people that you can go to so that then you can put together a project where you will benefit directly to some extent, but the wealth is sort of spread out amongst everybody. Um, I'm thinking of you know, an example from my previous life, which is that, for instance, the uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce would put together technical uh, assistance for small businesses in rural areas like in Arvin, Lamont. But that was part of an issue that they were getting funding governmentally from SVDC and a couple other federal grants. Because the idea is what? We want to help serve rural outlying communities and help them to be able to start up some businesses. It's really no different because these Chambers of Commerce have multiple um, interests, multiple people that are vested, because obviously if you look at their boards, a variety of people from different industries, so you really want to be able to go in there, get as much information as possible, get to know people and their expertise, and this is one venue of doing that. Um, so don't be surprised if you find yourself, when you graduate, working with Jeremy, because you should the research that he'll be conducting, the funding that he'll be looking to apply, he needs local partners, local businesses to be able to put down as partners that would be interested in engaging in these projects. And that, you know, is kind of an approach that helps everybody that's involved. Innovator awards, community fund large grants, and of course, grants, uh, Wells Fargo, let's see. There you go, community development, housing, financing small businesses or farms, provide job training and workforce development, revitalize and stabilize communities. And then of course, if you're interested, you can go to their website find out what regions they fund, and then, when time, reach out to them. So Central Valley, there you go. And make them safe, they're, they're looking to give their funding. That, that's, what, that's what it's been set aside. The question is to propose a project that is of value and of worth not only to yourself, but to people that are either in the same place as yourself in terms of community or in industry.
So can I try a little experiment here? Go for it. Uh, I know I'm actually interested to, like, I don't know, like take about 15 minutes. And with the students we have, we don't have that many students here. So I actually have pulled up like everybody's career interests. Sure. And long-term dreams too. So starting with Evan, you said that it'd be cool to have a, your own marketing business one day, right? Okay, so if you want to stay in, in Bakersfield, you want to stay in California? Do you care uh, where you are? Yeah, Bay Area. Bay Area. Okay, so let's see if we can find something that would fund, that would help a marketing business in the Bay Area. So, uh, first of all, I would say if you want to get grant funding as a marketing agency, you got to market something that's valuable for the society. Or you got to do something that's impacting the society positively. So if you were to choose like how you want your business to make the world a better place, in addition to making you money with clients that pay you for marketing, what would you want to do to make the world a better place? Specifically what you story and support clinics. Okay. Okay. So could we look up like youth sports Bay Area? Is there like a geographic focus where we can just narrow it down to the Bay Area? Yeah, and this this is not the Bay Area, but at least California. So I'm looking for something that. Oh, look, did you, can you grow up there? That was a Jerry Hill. I know Jerry Hills. <laughs> it's the best paper award, but uh, that's that's actually for the American Marketing Association. So they yeah. actually award money to the, for the, the, the student that writes the best paper for the American Marketing Association. Fonda um, the foundation welcomes applications from organizations and agencies throughout Southern California to support youth sports programs and activities. In general, LA84 makes grants to support program costs, sports equipment, renovation of sports facilities, school-based programs, girls in sports, youth sports, so on and so forth. And they fund primarily in Southern California. Uh, and they, pr they fund uh, 501c3s and so on and so forth. So this is just one. As a, like, as an example though for, uh, for Evan, because I want to go through rapid fire and do a couple others too. Mm -hmm. So Evan, if for example, all you had was that information, and if you had like an hour to spend, I'm sure you could find somebody specifically funding like the kind of youth sports you'd like to do in any community in the Bay Area you want to be in. Um, and if you played your cards right, you could probably have it be broad, more broadly related to business development or job creation. Mm -hmm. So um, you could basically get money and maybe spend 80% of it on youth programs and 20% of it on actually doing new client development because it's also helping to generate economic benefits for the community. Um, and if you couldn't find anything else, you could actually call that foundation in Southern California, mm -hmm. or you could even look them up on LinkedIn and see who I'm connected to that knows them, and then ask them, hey, I want to do the same thing in the Bay Area. Who's, who does this up there? Yeah. And the people at that foundation would know. Yeah. Um, uh, Jose, yeah. Um, so I'm, every time I think about you, I think about like ag sector and accounting. Mm -hmm. um, but if you wanted to get grant money for something, <coughs> What, you want, what would you want to get it for? Probably try to give maybe more Hispanic youth into the accounting industry. Okay. So this is where really you have to play with it so that then you eventually you can get some search terms down. But I'm just going to type in accounting, fellowship, Very broad, right? Because I because I want to get um, recall, 
I'm going to say California. And then I'm going to hit search. So American Institute for Certified Public Accountants, scholarship for minority accounting students, $5,000. Scholarship for minority dark total students, if you're going to go into CPA and you're going to get a PhD. Diversity Multicultural Scholarship, Scholarships Education Foundation for Women in Accounting, American Institute, same thing. Multicultural undergraduate internships. So you're going to get a little bit of everything. So if I could jump in for a second again. If, for example, Jose, you decided to make it a little hobby project of yours, mm -hmm. like on the weekends, every weekend or every other weekend, maybe once, twice, once, twice a month, twice a month on the weekend for the next year, you're going to make it a little project to find X amount of dollars for like high school students currently to study accounting at CSUB, like specifically Hispanic mm -hmm. uh, high school students. If you did that every day, like not every day, like if you invested a little bit of time every weekend, like two weekends a month for a year, there's so much money out there for like Hispanic students in all kinds of fields, including accounting is a very popular one. I bet you see each one of those is somewhere between a couple grand and 10 or 20. Um, if you average that each one of them on average is 2,500 bucks, and you applied for, I usually, like, I, like I've said in this class, I usually, if I wanted one thing to succeed, I usually apply for 10. So if you applied for 10 of these, like one per month, every month for, the, for a year, mm -hmm. in a year, you would have 2,500 bucks to help some student in high school here in Kern County study accounting at Cal State, I bet you. That seem reasonable, Manuel? Yeah, and, I, and, I, and this is what I mean by, you know, when you enter your search terms in here, just taking the time to drill down. You're going to get plenty of recall. The really cool thing, though, is, and this is where once you find something, and you go, Eureka, that's exactly what I want. You come down here and you look at the keywords. Mm, good point. Because once you then find an announcement that's of interest, you use these keywords, you update your funding profile and now you're going to get what more relevancy rather than just putting out your net and catching everything so i don't know if you guys will caught that but in your profile that you create on this portal that you all have access to because you have cms csub email addresses um, and login information um, you can put into your profile i want you know accounting hispanic higher education california um, and then it will actually send you messages saying, this week, here's the five like opportunities in your area. Am I right, yeah. Manuel? Yeah. So let me see, uh, it could be a location. Uh, actually, let's just do broader. Like I said, you're going to get quite a bit. Doctoral fellowships, minority fellowships, management, dissertation awards, scholarships, educational foundation for women in, account in accounting. Let's see what this is. Female, accredited U.S. pursuing an accounting degree, and have financial aid. You may apply more than once. They have a variety of fellowships, uh, scholarships for undergrads, graduates, and then one for postgrads. And um, it's anywhere from 1600 to 1000 So, yeah, I mean, I said 2500 but if you were lucky enough to get that one, you might be able to get ten grand for somebody to study accounting. Let's do at least one more. Uh, Daniel, like, this actually, like, is relevant for Daniel and Marilla, at least project-wise, because you're working on the project. So Daniel is kind of looking at, like, two different potential career paths. Right. One is to take over his family's business, which is basically a furniture store in Delano. Right. And the other is to go into the ag sector, right? right. Um, and then the third is be a CHP officer. 
but, yeah, but uh, <laughs> so if like Daniel, think of like if you're if your furniture, how many people do you guys employ in Delano right now? Uh, four. four. Okay. So if you grew and started hiring more people, um, then A, you'd be creating jobs at Delano for people. But also, if like the people that work there now, plus people you might like want to hire in the future if you expanded and grew, like what do you like to do on the weekend? Like what do you what do your kid like what do you what do people's kids like to do? Like, what would, like, same, kind, of, kind of the same thing I asked Evan. Like, a lot of times you have to focus on grants that are going to help the community of Delano. And then they, they usually have some kind of training or economic development component. So, like, you can use a good chunk of the money to actually work on projects that are going to expand your business. But part of the money you also have to use to, like, build parks or you have to, um, build youth sports programs like we were talking about. So if you had to have like a charitable cause that the people involved with Junior's Furniture were interested in in Delano, what would it be? Uh, well, I mean, related to furniture, maybe I would say like furnish someone's home with a need or something like that. Okay. So tell me more about people at Delano who like have homes that need furniture and can't afford it. Like as far as what, like what kind of people are they? Are they Hispanic like based. mostly Hispanic? Yeah. Are a lot of them veterans? Are they older or younger? Older Hispanics. Okay. Um, are they? Um, did they used to work in a certain industry and lost a job, or have they basically always had a hard time getting a job? The majority of people work in agriculture. Okay, yeah. so we're basically talking, and when you say older, are we talking 30 to 40, 50 to 60, Probably 70 to 80? 40 to 50. Okay, so we're talking about middle-aged Hispanic people who used to work in agriculture and are now out of work or down on their luck, right? Yeah. Okay, so, and if you were to help them, like, get jobs or furnish their houses for free, that might allow them to look for like if you didn't hire them but you furnished their house for free that might like make them happier and more comfortable to be able to go out and find new jobs and earn more money right right so so just to give an example um usda has funding tied to weatherization and typically that funding well i should back up weatherization being that um appliances appliances for low-income families are not very energy efficient or they're typically older um, and likewise with housing uh, for people that live in low low-income areas uh, that housing is maybe getting close to being dilapidated and or it has significant need and so typically you might have older windows um, lack of insulation so on and so forth so nonprofits typically or county government will get funding to do what the actual work of getting out there and applying to get the funding to do the work. Now, the where a small business may come in is in the fact that they go out and they hire and they contract with small businesses, furniture stores, appliance stores, um, people who do weatherization, um, i.e. AC work, so on and so forth, to do the actual work on these homes. So hence, you're subcontracting with a local nonprofit, a county entity, but that funding is ultimately federal government funding that's been allocated for that. And so you see some grants here, the Energy Audit and Renewal Energy Development Assistance Program, Energy Systems and Energy Efficiency Improvements, and you can see Rural Business Cooperative Service, all of these things being what? I.e. government gets the funding at the local level and then they subcontract out the work to local entities, most of which are for-profit entities to do the actual work therein. This is what is known as contracting with the federal government. Um, and then more importantly, like I said, this if you're a business, this is guaranteed work, right? Um, and you are, in a sense, doing a public good because you're doing something that the federal government is has made priority and has set money aside for mandate. Like I said, if 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 the, the more you get out there and the more you get involved and engaged, you, you will learn that 
uh, the idea that there's the private sector and the public sector and never the two shall meet is false. <laughs> They're about as interwoven as can be. Um, and you really should look at yourself, especially if you plan on going into private enterprise, as needing to understand the lay of the landscape when it comes to the government so that you can put yourself in a place to be successful. Uh, if I can, go ahead. Um, this might be kind of a big question, so feel free to no, please. cut, but what do all these like, grants require? I mean, I'm sure it's different from grant to grant to grant sure. required to apply for. Sure. I mean, like, do you need like tax documents? Do you need, obviously you probably need to do like some type of presentation for some of them. Like, is it completely different or is there like a baseline for all of them? Or? Completely different, it depends, yeah. So if you're gonna be dealing with governmental grants, they are gonna be looking at your eligibility as to who you are based on tax code, i.e. your business, your school, your nonprofit, you're an individual. So based on that, you would have to provide documentation to substantiate that. And there are standard documents, that, especially when it comes to federal government and state government that you just, you're just using over and over again because those are documents that you're having to renew or you're receiving them on an annual basis. So that's number one. The, the second part, though, that I think is much more interesting is the fact that um, if you are looking to get funding uh, at the individual level, then it's just yourself, really. And so like some of the fellowships that we've seen, scholarships, they look like stuff that you guys should be applying to anyway, you know, whether it's here at the university or if you're looking to go into graduate programs and so on and so on. So it, it really does depend but it's standard practice. It's nothing that cannot be overcome. Um, and more importantly, if you're doing it on behalf of your employer, you, I guarantee you, you have those documents at hand. Yeah. It's just a matter of being knowledgeable about them. Can we do one more example, Manuel? Sure. Uh, I want to reward Ed, Ed Abanto, can you hear us? Yeah. I want to reward Ed Abanto for being the only person in our Antelope Valley classroom today. Uh, <laughs> Ed Abanto, um, you're working on the, uh, um, the, the, like, Taekwondo studio. Yeah. So, um, like, I'm interested, like, you actually wanted to open your own martial arts studio one day, right? Yes. So, like, we were already talking a little bit about youth sports when, um, like, when I asked Evan about his interests like in what he would want to do for the society if he had a marketing firm like mm -hmm. that's right up your alley too so like are you tell me more would you rather train like kids and teenagers into taekwondo or old people basically um well because they both to... could benefit from learning taekwondo i'm just curious if you had to pick uh well, I think the younger ones would be easier just because, like, that's more consistent flow. Okay. From what I've seen, because I've worked at a couple of martial arts studios, yep. and um, a majority of them are, like, uh, like kids and teenagers. Yep. So I think that's, like, the demographic I would aim for. Okay. So, Manuel, can we find something that actually would pay for youth activity, uh, the youth, like, health activity in Antelope Valley? Yeah. So the one thing that I would say is, let's, what's this one? Let's just click. That's the Amazon award. So this huh. is in the UK. Oh yeah, that's the one you saw before. That's interesting. Um, it's, it really is tempting for you to think, I need to find someone who's going to be willing to fund my project. And what I would say is get away from that type of thinking that's very linear. What you really want to be able to think is, what is it that my business, my enterprise is providing in a much more theoretical setting? So if you, if you saw the way I did the search terms, I'm really looking at the idea of the health component or youth engagement. Um, that's the element. So the idea being that you know, what you're doing at that gym with youth is no different than really what's happening at say the boys and girls clubs uh, uh, so on and so forth so from that perspective you would want to be looking for grants that are tied around that health wellness community engagement parental engagement 
Um, and then in turn looking to see where is that funding, one, and then two, what are the types of organizations that are being funded? Because that's where you would want to be able to partner up so that you can then apply for funding. And so to, I'll give a very specific example that I think is pretty interesting. So I know that in terms of the local county, um, they've applied for funding uh, from state funding for parks, but they've done it under these nonprofits that are actually out in Greenfield and they do Zumba classes. So it, it's not that, quote unquote, they got funding to do Zumba classes, not at all. They got funding to do improvements in the local community so that these groups can use them for athletic you know, events, activity, and in turn, all the other things that you could possibly think. So it wasn't necessarily a direct, they were funded, so much as the argument was made was, well, what are we doing that's of value to not only myself, but to the community, and, that, and, and in terms of scaling it up. So that's really where you want to think. And then that intentionality is what should be driving your search and your terms. So think about it from that perspective. Not just I offer a service and people purchase it. Like think deeper. Hey, did you hear all that? Yeah, I was typing it down as he was going. Okay, cool. So I would say, and I'll let Manuel correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say in your case, like whether it's the city of Palmdale, city of Lancaster, Kern County, LA County, um, you're not that far away from San Bernardino County either. Like. I, I, I assure you that each of those entities has funds set aside in the local government budget already to encourage youth health. And then there's also statewide money, there's various foundations, there's a lot of money out there that wants to see healthy kids grow into healthy adults in our society. So just to give an example, Go ahead. like I said, this is where if you think about the search terms and you're getting at the theoretical of it. So I entered two additional words, mm -hmm. uh, health or fitness, and now I'm getting sports-based youth development, supporting healthy minds and youth resiliency grants, rural health, uh, advancing wellness grants. Once again, it gets at the underlying Ooh, thing can that you look at the doing. Cal Wellness thing there quick? Which one? The advancing wellness grants, Cal Wellness. Sure. How much... Can we look at the who's who's so awarding health care health and safety in neighborhoods education and employment health policy and strengthening the sector um how much money so it doesn't say but hence this is why we visit the sponsor directly they got 35 million in total grants. they have quite a bit they of funding some significant amount of money there and then this is a cool thing if you're eligible to apply you can submit a letter of interest a letter of interest is Sell your project. Sell what you think, you know, is of value. It's low income, low input in terms of effort because it's just going to be a letter. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. If the funder likes it, they they will then ask you, okay, submit a full proposal where you really go in depth on this. Yeah, and like I said, healthcare. Health and safety, safe neighborhoods. What, what, is I, it, what do they mean by healthy and safe neighborhoods? Actually, can we so, so that quick? if we can go to the person that's in Lancaster, yeah. wh where would this uh, business be, so to speak, like uh, regionally, like location? Is this in, in California or where? Uh, yeah, in California. What city? Um, like hypothetically, where I'd want one. You tell me. Um, Santa Clarita, Valencia area. Okay, is Santa Clarita, Valencia area, is, are you thinking it's going to be located in, in the very high and affluent area, or maybe the, the area that's a little bit more lower income? A little bit lower. All right, see, and this is why I'm trying to get you to go there, because the idea being that is if you're going to put up your martial arts studio in a very highly affluent area, then really why, why are you looking for funding in the first place from the federal no, government? Yeah, no. But if you're looking to place it in an area that there is need, social, economic, or otherwise, you can make an argument, which is that it's not just that I operate a business here. I provide an opportunity for what? Youth activity, youth engagement, uh, positive enforcement of certain things. Hence, health, 
healthy and safe neighborhoods because if children are here, youth are here, they're learning positive, good habits rather than otherwise being out in the street. Maybe you have an education component where you're working with a local school district in some fashion. Um, I can make uh, this stuff up, so to speak. Manuel, can I just uh, riff off that for a second? Yeah, go no? for it. And Ibanto, just to give an example for you and everybody else, if you did want to put it in a rich neighborhood, yeah. like you're not going to go to the California, I mean, yeah, I don't know, wellness is like rich people have to be healthy too. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, basically, if you did go to an affluent neighborhood, you're probably not going to target as much federal and state money, mm -hmm. but what you could take or target is the neighborhood foundation, the, the yep. neighborhood uh, organization. Yep. Like, every, no matter where you live, like, Rich people contribute money to their neighborhood association mm -hmm. to provide services and interesting stuff in the community. So if I were in a wealthy neighborhood, I'd go to the neighborhood association, maybe to the Chamber of Commerce, to like yeah. the Better Business Bureau. You have to go where the organization is. Figure are. out yeah. who in that community is responsible for finding fun stuff for the rich people to do. Yeah, and, and that's what I mean by really becoming knowledgeable in your community and the sector that you're in. Because there always will be an affinity group, some sort of uh, area or group of people that are all around this one interest area. So when you can find that, you're building your network, you're building your knowledge base. Um, so that, you, for, for instance, you can go after grants like this. Uh, I'm going to ask the class. It's like 6.30 right now. Uh, I originally promised you that I was going to cover what we didn't cover about, like, basically working with unions. Uh, and then we were actually going to go over today's slides, which was, were basically about setting up the right location and operational facilities for your, your, your physical location, depending on what kind of business you are. Um, but we only got 15 minutes, so obviously we can't really do justice to all that. Um, so let me ask for a vote. Like, there's three options. We can A, continue to just talk about cool grant opportunities for the next 10 minutes or so, and we'll pick up where we left off with the lecture slides next Tuesday. Option one. Option two, I got 15 minutes. I can finish up on labor uh, uh, unions and a couple other things about, like, Disciplining employees, that's two. And option three is um, I can start talking about like facilities planning and uh, uh, facilities, where you're gonna locate your facility and how you're gonna lay out operations inside the facility depending on what kind of business you are. So let's go in reverse order. Option three, who wants to talk about facilities and planning and stuff? Okay, David, cool, thanks for being honest. No offense, Manuel. No, not at all. Uh, okay, that's option one. Did I, did I see more hands? I think you might be alone, man. Okay, hands for option two, finishing talking about labor unions and disciplining employees. But nobody wants to talk about disciplining employees and unions. Like, you all, we all want to be leaders <laughs> and in uh, charge of the You're the gonna business. have to deal with it you're if, you, have to deal if with you employ it. people at all. Okay, and then third, wanna talk about more how to get more money for the next 15 minutes? Okay, I think that wins. Uh, Manuel, you mind being on stage for another 15 minutes? No, not at all. Okay, uh, and Amanda, do you have more questions? Or like, we've actually only got like four more students here in Bakersfield that we haven't focused on yet. Do you have more questions about your possible Taekwondo business for the future? Uh, no, you pretty much got them all. I, I wrote down as much as I could. Okay, yeah. so yeah, thank you. Then. no problem. Um, who wants to be the example next? I'm gonna like pull up my list of everybody's career goals again, but feel free to volunteer. You know, I don't have to call on you. I'll tell you mine. Oh, okay, M Morella? You're, we're gonna get like we have 15 minutes, so we're gonna go you, Mirage, and first. then Morella. Okay, now go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, mine. I I put my career goal as like I I'm a freelance photographer right now, and I wanted to start a, a pretty much like an online company, not an actual like office or anything for my photography related stuff. So would I? I don't I don't know if there's any like grants that I could do. 
because it's not like a benefiting. Like, can can I ask a question again while while Manuel is thinking about his ideas? Yeah. Like, what kind of things do you like to take pictures of? Mostly like uh, I do landscape, and mostly right now I'm doing for like some uh, small companies, like t-shirts companies. So they hire me, and they have models there, and then. I just take and you're taking pictures. pictures of the models with the t-shirts? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so um, if like if you took pictures of landscapes around Kern County, for example, would you be psyched for those pictures to be shown in like the Kern County Museum? Okay. So what about arts grants in this case? Well. Yeah, let's, I'm, I'm trying to get okay. for that logic. Ooh, photography grants right there at the top. And the way that... That's Maple Corp. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. The way like, that Jeremy was thinking about in terms of, like, the community good, right? Um, and the idea of taking pictures for, like, the county or for, like, the local Kern County Museum or something to that effect. That's a good start. Um, I'm just going to click on this just to see what it is. Provides support for museums and other public institutions to create or expand photography departments, including the acquisition of photographs, documentation. The foundation will not provide scholarships or grants to individuals. The foundation grants only organizations in the United States. So, can I make a suggestion on how that might be used? Go for though, it. Or yeah. do you, you want to go for no, it? No, go for it. No, really. Like, you Raj, for example, like, if CSUB, there's a couple of leaps, there's a couple of leaps of, like, logic here, but follow me, okay? If CSUB wanted to expand their arts and humanities school to include a photography department, um, and you were a good photographer who also was a good teacher and had some nice connections in the community, they could pay you as a professor in the department to teach photography, which would then like pay for your like bills and like basic living expenses. And then in the rest of your hobby time, you could run your photography studio. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like that Maplethorpe, like I can tell you Manuel again can correct me if I'm wrong. I can tell you that there's some political hoops to jump through if you want to have a photography department created in in our like humanity school. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people who think that like a, a carpentry school would be more important than a photography school, and then there's going to be other people who think that sculpture is more important than photography. There's a lot of like battles that you're going to have to balance there. But let's just assume that. Some, like there's enough support for a photography school. The Maplethorpe Foundation would pay for the basic like admin support, uh, budget, and faculty salaries for that department. But they, they, they want to see more universities have photography departments. And if you were a good photographer and a good teacher, um, and you have some good connections with the community to help students find jobs as photographers after they graduate, you could be one of those professors and then basically your day job is working in that department and then you can be a photographer in your spare time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's several leaps there, but if the if the Maplethorpe Foundation, if there were people on this campus that wanted to have a photography department, like the Robert, Ma Robert Maplethorpe Foundation has got significant amount of money and their whole mission in life is to see more photographers out there. Sorry, go ahead, Manuel. So I found something that is quite literally what you're asking for. Uh, you just have to live in Detroit. <laughs> Want to move to Detroit? <laughs> but the point being is, if you just take your time and you search, you may find something that's indirectly related to you. And I think that's where you would want to start. In this case, it's quite literally a fellowship where they tell you, you can spend the money on whatever you want. Um, I mean, the description here is about as broad as you can get. Which one was it? Here we go. Fellowships and Gilda Awards are no strings attached awards, meaning artists may spend the money on any aspect of their creative practice or life, i.e. making new work, renting or purchasing studio space, travel, general living expenses, paying off debt, etc. Nice. 
So it's and not a lot of money, but they'll basically give you twenty five thousand dollars to do whatever the hell I you mean, want. You for talk a about a photographer. That is about as open as can be. Um, yeah. So, and in this case, it's specifically in um, Macomb, Oakland, or Wayne County. So, yeah. But it's out there. It's just a matter of looking at it. Um, I, I like Jeremy's angle of the arts because th that is typically where, in terms of a governmental aspect, photography will be seen as, you know, encompassing in the arts. So you would also want to look at arts fellowships, um, arts funding, um, because while you may be doing something that is of interest in terms of creating a financial incentive for yourself, maybe you're doing the work on behalf of the Kern County Museum, a local research institute here at CSUB, so on and so forth. Um, I do have people from the community that will actually approach us and say there's this grant that I would be interested in working on, but I can't apply directly. Um, can, would, would the university be interested in, to which I have to say to them, look through our directory, look through the discipline that is most relevant in terms of the industry or the aspect, and go speak with some faculty. Because if faculty are interested in doing that type of community work, community service, research, now you have your partner here, you will do the more pragmatic aspect in terms of the community or the delivery of a service, and now we can put together a proposal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, I want to make sure we get to Morella too. Yeah. What were you going to ask about? Um, maybe, um, like, funding or Mm -hmm. For young adults? Yeah. So fitness programs yeah. for young adults in Delano. And you want to see more of them. Okay. So I'm going to hit advanced search. So I'm going to do fitness. I'm going to do community health. Delano. Uh, what's the population of Delano now? It's not 50,000 anymore. It's probably up to it's what? Like 65. 65. It's growing. I'm still going to call it rule because typically still it'll be considered that. Um, let's type in young adults just to see what happens. It's yound. Yound? It's like young right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to hit search just to see what I get. And then from here, uh, I'm going to want to do private foundations, just to see. So you have rural health, youth development programs, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation mm -hmm. Sports Award. This might be interesting to a couple of you guys. Uh, up to three awards, $10,000 prize, your success is celebrated. So, catalyze and sustain changes to community. So this is really more of a, of a direct grant to the individual. Yeah, but still, the, the, the third sentence there said, rewarding like community organizations mm -hmm. that foster. There were like three, three award criteria. Third one, you got, yeah, I can't remember where it was in the abstract or the amount, I think it's in the abstract. Mm -hmm. You can look at it, go directly to the source. It's always a good place. Yeah, category three, an organization, <clears throat> leader and, and model for improving community health through sports. Mm -hmm. So do you think Delano would, be, Delano would be healthier if more young people were involved in fitness programs? Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of, um, you know, soccer leagues where quite a few young people, you know, participate in. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, going back to our My Zumba example, where community groups have got, got together and partner up, and they're typically when working in facilities that relate to either a school district or a nonprofit, um, or maybe even a business. This is where you can make the argument that, once again, what's being done here 
is of community value, greater impact, um, to look at really what exactly is occurring here and moving away from just profit and loss. I would say in this particular one, Morella, like your challenge there is that these are, it looks like these are actually awards rather than like developmental funding. So basically you have to have already been successful with your local organization in order to get rewarded basically by, um, by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and saying like, hey, for the last five years of what you've been doing to build community health in Delano, here's a $10,000 prize. But in, I think, in, like, does that seem like that to you as well, Manuel, on this one, it, or not? It, it does, but they're very clear about saying, you know, we want to see the focus to be doing these things. Okay. We're looking for innovative approaches, right? Cool. I.e., private enterprise, nonprofits, community groups coming together. All of that would be what? Collaboration. We're talking about impact and measurable results and then sustainability. So you may be looking at purchasing things that are one time in, in, uh, in cost to be able to build that capacity, build an infrastructure, build a facility, so on and so forth, improve it. Uh, and then the idea being that you're promising the funder, look, if you just get us these things, everyone can use them, everyone can profit, quote unquote, be better off with them. And this can continue into the future with obviously less fun because if you're looking at opening up a new recreation center that's going to taste quite a bit of take quite a bit of funding but once you can find a non-profit that can then administer it operate over time maintenance costs will be significantly less than having to buy brand new of everything and then more importantly they can continue looking for funding they can just continue looking for funding, and as they can get it, they can proceed from there, from local entities, state entities, and federal entities. It, it becomes an ongoing process after all. For those of you that, uh, if you've ever worked with a nonprofit or know of one, this is what they do all the time. They continually apply. Does that give you some interesting ideas, Morel? Does that like give you some interesting ideas? Was that useful? Do you have more questions? Okay. Um, I'm curious, who, like, do you have any high school athletes from Delano that went on to play pro sports or went on to be successful in college sports? Huh? I'm sure in the history of the city of Delano, there's somebody that's ended up playing pro sports. I bet you, if you if, if they were still up. involved oh, in the city of Delano and they wanted to see Delano be successful, I bet you if you got them involved, it would significantly improve the chances of, a, of an application like this getting funded. Even if you're doing like development of a community health, uh, community fitness area, like if it's the community fitness center, like sponsored by like Big Mike. Like, I'm thinking, like, there's a, he, he's actually not from Delano, he's from, like, Bakersfield, but I'm working with a guy right now on a website for his uh, catering business. He has a barbecue catering business, but once upon a time, he went to one of the local high schools, and then he went to San Diego State, and then he played, like, offensive lineman for the Packers and the Giants for a little while. So, now, he's back home, and he runs a barbecue restaurant, but if we had, like, you know, the Delano Fitness Center, like sponsored by Big Mike, like I bet it would impress the people at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation because mm -hmm. they like to reward like athletic achievement in addition to developing new athletic activities. So uh, I'm sure there's a similar athlete from the history of Delano that went on to have some success either in like college competition or professionally. And that'd be probably good to put in an application like that. Anyway. So really, just more than any, more, more than anything, think broader. Don't don't be so small and narrow in your thinking when it comes to looking for funding. Look at what your business entity is doing in terms of the bigger aspect and how it relates to the community, uh, and that will help you to formulate search terms, search terminology, build your profile, get those funding adverts on a weekly basis, and then from there, take your time. Just invest. You know, really dig in there. 
you will eventually find that one that goes, this is, this is exactly what I'm looking for. From there, you can take information about who the sponsor is, what, what's their search terms, to build more relevance and be more specific to you. But definitely do what Jeremy, you know, has, has sort of um, alluded to, which is go out to those community groups, nonprofits, civic engagement groups, and get involved with those. Cool. Um, so it's five minutes after our normal stopping time. Um, my next class is in here too, so I'm not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> you, like, you guys are welcome to, st like, Manuel, do you have to go anywhere before seven? Yeah, I do. You have to go now? Yeah. Okay, so you're welcome to stick around and ask me more questions because I'm going to be here teaching my next class. Manuel has to go, and you guys are free to go if you want, but I'm here if you need any more questions. And hopefully, like, that would, like, Manuel, I think everybody here got a lot out of it, but I know since we recorded it, like, I'm going to send a link to that far and wide, and it's going to impact a lot of students. So thank you for being here. So my extension is 3534 on campus. Really, you're welcome to call me. Um, I get people from the community that will cold call me all the time. It's not an issue. I, I can, I'm, I'm always willing to direct you in the right direction. Likewise, if you want to play with Pivot, it's available and accessible. If you need me to help you to, you know, to make sure you're looking in the right direction, we can also do that as well. So I'm here, I'm offering myself, take advantage of it. Thank you very much. Let's give Manuel a round of applause.